everybody to Pop Dust Presents. I'm here with an awesome group, Mama Juke. Hey guys. Thanks, Brent. Hey, Brent. Hey, man. How's it going? Thank you guys for being here. I'm blown away by the vocal harmonies that you guys do. It's, it's three of you, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Sometimes John pulls the low end. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, the caboose Every harmony. Every once in a while. Yeah. Every once in a while. We could, yeah. we Every once in a while. Yeah. I like, I like I said that. From time to time. Mm -hmm. Barbershop Definitely. quartet style. You know, I guess we, we, we really suck at barbershop quartet, but we we just, we strive for that sometimes. Yes. I, mean, I love it. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. one, oh, of, yeah, my, that's that's one of my do. one of my joys in life is doing barbershop. Quartet he does he does jazz stuff. and stuff like that. I could tell from the from the hat I was getting a little barbershop. Jazz hat. Um, tell us, how would you guys describe your sound? Because uh, it, it, it's a, it, it's different for the pop dust audience that's been watching these different things and refreshingly different. It's really good. Yeah, man. Well, uh, let's see. It's cool. We got a, a group of people that do a bunch of other stuff. Um, I guess, uh, I mean, it's rooted in, I guess, what we call Americana music. And a lot of them, we listened to uh, a lot of the Beatles growing up. So there's this sense of like that folklore kind of sound. I don't know. Folk but, with like a pop sensibility. Yeah. And then kind of, so we go for, you know, big harmonies and like occasional. Uh, Hobbit music. Yeah. Hobbit music. Yeah, that's really what we're going, that's our target audience. <laughs> I like that. Is, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had seen somewhere described sort of like a New Orleans sound. Do you, do yeah. you, mm -hmm. do you relate with that? Oh, big time. Yeah. It, yeah, <clears throat> it was really quick. So we kind of started at first and it was very folky and kind of bluegrass sound and then Amos came into the picture and we actually shifted and did a lot more like swing and rock I feel and like, roll and that, yeah, that kind of jazziness. But there's always been, I've always been fascinated with the interplay between jazz and rock and roll. And like in the 60s, you had a lot of people doing 30s throwback tunes. Yeah. Like uh, Cream has one, the Beatles have like Honey Pie. And so there's always been like a lot of trading between the genres and I think we like to do that. And where is everybody from originally? Does that have any impact on the sound? Well, I'm from Michigan originally. Uh, yeah, I studied with a lot of great musicians there. Motown's in Detroit. I don't know. I've always had a bit of that kind of funk, <coughs> funk groove aesthetic, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm from just up the river in Yonkers, New York, so I've been in and around New York my whole musical career. and. Uh, that's exposed me to a lot of different stuff, and I, I play a lot of different styles, and, and you know, I feel like that only enriches my uh, musical development. Yeah, man, Brendan's a sick vocalist. He's actually Very a better sick. singer than both of us. Well, depending on which take of the <laughs> tune they heard, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you might hear that. Um, but yeah, I mean, the band, band's only as good as the rhythm sections, so it's like really cool that we get to kind of do some things with an amazing like like bass and drums pulling up all of our all of our uh, speed and stuff so but and, uh, uh, he's yeah. from Long Island yeah I'm, I'm from Long Island yeah and, uh, from just over the river and uh, or the, the other river. the other river over the sound okay wow. Wow. And through the woods wow. over and, the sound. Uh, yeah but for me I always wanted to end up in New York this guy's from Massachusetts. Western Massachusetts. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can hear by the accent. Huh? You can tell it's got that Massachusetts swing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they're That's famous the for it. Somewhere. Right? Yeah, I'm from South Jersey originally. Oh, nice. Yes, raised oh. by trees in a wolf forest, and it, now I'm here in New York. Wow. And a, a Brooklynite, which I think you guys are now, or at least John is, right? Yeah, That's yeah, right. we all live We're in Brooklyn. All. Yeah. yeah. Last time I spoke with John, he was here uh, talking about the the Una J show where I believe you guys all performed. It was yeah. the, uh, the, the the Rock is Dead three mm -hmm. event. Yeah. Uh, how did that all go? I, that was a sold out event. I couldn't get in, and I called in a bomb threat, whatever I could. None of it worked. <laughs> um, you couldn't get in? Uh, no, nah, I mean, in. well, you know, and sure. Did I fall asleep early and stay home? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But even in my dreams, I couldn't get in. It was it was a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It yeah. was terrible. It was packed, man. It was yeah. it was well, a lot me, of fun. Let me tell you, Rock is Dead Three, we killed it. 
They always yeah. say the trilogy or the, the 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 third one is the best in the trilogy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. think about Back it to the Future, like Jurassic Park. It's Children of the Corn Three. It yeah, was just, that it was, was the children. best one. Yeah, it was. It was yeah. like what? Yeah. Children of the Corn Four was going too far, but we're not going to go too far with Rock is Dead Four. We're going to make it awesome. Yeah. Oh, it's that. not going to be like Children of the Corn Four or Superman. We always have a lot of fun at Unit J. In fact, their, our first album is a live recording from Unit J about a year ago. So, yeah, that's kind of been like our home base. We still do a lot of parties and shows there. Yeah. Uh, yes, indeed. I personally would recommend people, if they want to come out and see the band, that's like usually at the top of the list. Come, come to the Unity show. Check us out. Yeah. Have a good time. And then it's interesting to me that you guys come from diverse musical backgrounds and you have sort of a, a sound that you know, you wouldn't be expecting it necessarily from a bunch of Brooklynites, like, yeah. you know, um, which I think is great and probably helps you guys stand up. But then also as musicians, you're able to go on and do a show as The Clash, which is, it's gotta be kind of fun, like jumping well, into man, a role we, like that. We, we had to rehearse, we had to get the material together. We were on all of each other's asses yeah, for a, like a month. It was month. a lot of new material. Yeah, yeah. But, um, we like doing this. The third time we've done it. First time we did the Beatles. Second time we did the band. Yeah. Those were easier for us because we knew even half the, of the songs. We knew all yeah. the songs. Yeah. Is or at there least it, someone did? Is there also like makeup and stuff involved? Are you trying oh, to? There was for the first two years. We hired a makeup artist. This year we just and went a little stronger with our costume design. Yeah. Couldn't, I see. Afford. Yeah. Any any elaboration on that? The Clash. They they often uh, use some military gear. To yes. make their point about the proliferation of militarized police and stuff like that, you know. So it was. Hmm. I guess that's <laughs> real clear. That then, right? That's. Yeah. You don't worry about that anymore. Yeah. yeah. I mean, right. but you know, by that same token, it, it was pretty amazing how many of their lyrics still apply today in a very scary way. One of the main reasons we did the class was, I don't know. You get a lot of people in one room, you can do whatever you want, you know, you can say whatever you want, you can cover whatever band, but that band, just going through, one day I actually just listened to the old album, and I was just like, goosebumps, like, this is, we need to be, hopefully everyone's not drunk enough and can understand what we're saying, mm -hmm. because those songs are, yes, very relevant, you know, a yeah. lot of them. So it was fun to be singing and playing, but also to be saying something during that holiday, I guess. Like, I know. like know your rights was was one cool one, <laughs> where you're saying like, oh yeah, I'm just, we could go on and on and on yeah. forever. Everyone just go listen to The Clash. Yeah, go yeah, listen, go to, the listen to The Clash. Check out The Clash. Go Cut to the Clash. clash is, the Clash is a great band. Check them out. We're gonna. We're they're gonna, a we're couple gonna. of young up and comers, uh, <laughs> yeah, and and they're 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 really good though. Yeah. And we hope you know what we'll have you guys on the show sometime. Uh, get Mama Juke approved. Yeah. 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 Well, you performed two songs earlier. Is there anything that you'd like to say about those songs to put them in context? Maybe people watch them and they said, "I love that." What was it about? Maybe they maybe they heard it and they said that was offensive. I'm gonna freak out. So if you can just speak to any of those sure. various um, emotions. Somewhere, I actually started writing with an ex-girlfriend a very long time ago. Always a good idea. Always a good idea. <laughs> and uh, we split up, and then I wrote the rest of the song as like, hey, I still remember you. You know, that's I know cute. it's kind of cheesy. No, that's cute. But the song turned into something really cool. It turned into like this... I don't know. I like. I like. I love westerns. I love Clint Eastwood. Yeah, it's not, it's not about that. It's not about. The song's not about that. But that's what motivated some of the song. All right, that's I'm going like, on a black hole of songwriting ex explanation. So hold on, it, it, we'll, we'll backtrack. No, but that this, makes this, total sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I was like, yo, I'm gonna. That's sort of homage to that era and. Probably yeah, yeah, but it was. It was like. A, it was gonna be in like you know like first person like experiences like, specifically that I have but I was like why don't we just do a song about this character who who is constantly on the run and you know and at the time I was when I when I wrote it I was really broke extremely broke and I, I was getting food from my friend's restaurant and you know I, I was living in this warehouse unit J before I got big and um big it's not big Back. just before before I got, it got, I got big before it got all mainstream, you know, mainstream. I like their old stuff man yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. that first album yeah um, that first year but uh yeah man the the song is just you know uh 
really just uh, not thinking twice, not having the chance to think twice about what you're doing, and just kind of uh, you know living in, a, in an adrenaline rush and worrying about if like what you're doing is it's you know make makes any sense or if it's worth it or anything but just like running from something is what actually makes you in the moment and, and it's that's really the the story behind it but uh, yeah man i just really i really fucking love the, this western theme stuff and i like that uh you know being chased by the cops and stuff and and it's uh it's an interesting story but um yeah the the oak tree line waiting for something that you don't know if it's going to be there or not you know it's also a theme of it uh, somewhere and then the other one that you perform yeah that's uh, uh mama can tell the other one yeah. is called mama can tell and it's about um well sometimes a man can know something and sometimes a woman I've... can know something uh, now you usually, lost me usually <laughs> back it's, it up it's a little controversial but the, the point is that sometimes women just know, and men just don't know. And uh, that's kind of what that song's about. And the mama in the song, is that Duke? That's, that's, part, of, that's part of the whole idea. You know, we leave that one open yeah. to interpretation. Oh, OK. There's a couple of uh, is there... possible characters that the mama was in the process of the writing. But one was definitely the all-powerful Mama Duke. And where did the name come from, if you're allowed to disclose such details? If you're not... Mama Can Tell? Mama Juke. Oh, Mama Juke? Yeah, that's... that's uh, so we were used to be called Mama Buick. Oh, and, and then you got sued by Buick. That's essentially what happened, Huge man. We, 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 lawsuit. Yeah, we lost all of our money. And why, why Mama Buick? Is it because if you're like me, uh, you were conceived and <clears throat> born in a Buick? In, in a Buick. Yeah. Was it this? It's Our from. A, um, sorry. No, no. no. But please Go explain. <laughs> I got nothing on that one. Go on. No, but Mama Bugue is actually a song that I wrote with a friend about a mama who, whose husband dies and sh her oh, kids yikes. are gone, and she has the old man's old Buick in the garage, and one day she decides to write a letter telling kids to feed the cats and dogs. She gets in the Buick. She, uh, gets her cigarettes and she pulls out, dusts it off and she never comes back again. She robs a bank. She sleeps with these dudes at a, at a uh, restaurant. And she just, she's like in her, you know, like, like late seventies and she just hasn't lived yet. She's been, she's been like always providing for her family. And then she just goes out and just kills it, you know? And then she actually gets shot down by the police force. That's the, that's the name of the song or Mom, Mama Buick. But, um, and this came out of your imagination? Yeah, yeah, essentially. This is me and my buddy, uh, my buddy Johnny O'Shea, actually. O'Shea. Oh, this. Have you guys seen him, or is this just a character that he O'Shea. talks about? <laughs> O'Shea the dirt. Is there any verification on this? He's right there. Hey, dude. Uh, no. Nah. <laughs> For those of you at home, there's there's nobody there, and I want to let's let's no we'll get, we'll get you the we'll get you the proper help you know um, that you need. So that's a story that you came up with. Yeah. But we had a bunch of names and yeah, we just kind of we had some crazy names and yeah we just went through it and then it just turned into Mama Juke because we're like a, we like like to do every kind of sound like a jukebox like. You know, um, I like that. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you to Mama Juke. Thank you so much for Thank hanging you, out. Uh, please yeah, check man. them out December 12th, December 12th at Rockwood. Shake your butts. Get ready for their upcoming album at a secret date. And uh, yeah, any yeah. last words for everybody? Go ahead. Thank you guys. Um, Shout outs to Callista. Callista. For making this. Our good friend. Callista so Evans. Dear friend. Uh, all the homies at Unit J. Hey guys. Hey. And, and Drew Cutler and the uh, I Feel Fine. I mean, the. The, that feeling. That when, feeling when, man. When? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, dude. And uh, and um, my my hamster. And Your hamster. Christine. Christine. Hey, Christine. Christine right. Hamster. Is Christine and the hamster? Pop dust. Thank you guys. You're, yes. You're welcome. Thanks all for dealing with us. All right. And we'll see you at Rockwood, December twelfth. At what time? 10 p.m. 10 p.m. Yes, indeed. And your social medias. Yeah, we got the Instagram, Mama Juke Music. Um, we got the Twitter. website at mamajukemusic.com. We got Twitter at Mama Juke Music. We're on Bandcamp, Bandcamp Mama Tinder, Juke Music. Farmers Only. MySpace. MySpace. Farmers Only. <laughs> That's great. 
Um, I feel like you guys could actually clean up on Farmers say. Only. Yeah? Can, yeah, because, yeah. you know, you got that down and south stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you guys. From everybody at Pop to Us, please subscribe, like, follow Mama Juke. Thank you guys and good night. Good night. Bye-bye.